Hi friends, I'm at the Iowa Governor's Mansion. Here's the sign. Let's go. in front of the carriage house. Let's go take a tour. Follow me. Ah, this is locked. Come in. Come in. How are you? Good. Can I just have you fill out the top part of this? Shall I take you back? Okay.
uh, took over as its own house had. And uh, there are lots of unique old homes back over in the, uh, uh, between here and 28th Street. Uh, Mr. Allen, I don't know whether where you parked, but there's a house in the corner here, kind of working on the wall. He built that house and lived in that house uh, after he lost to us. So, I don't know. So, that would be hard after owning this house to build that house. Not that it's a tiny bit of house, uh, but it's nothing like this. So, uh, Mr. Allen then went to California uh, in his later years to raise citrus crops. Unfortunately, he went bankrupt out there also. So he didn't have too much luck. Um, the story is Mr. Hubble paid to have his body brought back to the point. They're both buried in terrace or uh, in uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Woodland Cemetery over here on uh, Martin King. And uh, the couples have this huge mausoleum right inside the gate. Mr. Allen was buried near the back of the cemetery and they got both his birth and death dates wrong. So he didn't have much luck. By the way, all of the uh, plantings are done by William Warren Boynton, who was a Chicago architect. And he designed hotels, uh, railroad stations, department stores. Much of his buildings, though, were destroyed in the big Chicago fire in the late uh, 19th century. But he designed homes, and this home is in the Second Empire style and one of the best examples of Second Empire style architecture in the country. Of course, that tower is what stands out. It would be 90 feet tall or about the height of a nine-story skyscraper. So if you were up in the very, very top of that tower, you would have a great view of Des Moines, uh, the Raccoon River Valley, Des Moines and Raccoon River Valleys, going all the way out west. When the home was built, of course, it was out in the country. There was nothing around it. Grand Avenue was just a little gravel road called Sycamore Road or Sycamore Lane. And uh, so this home really did stand out because it is on one of the higher points of land uh, in Des Moines. Uh, other architectural features would be the mansard style roof around the top. Again, the third floor was the servants' quarters and uh, today uh, that's where the governor and uh, her family lives. Uh, we have the very large windows on the uh, first and second floor and then symmetry was very very important to the architect so he said okay if there's a window here there has to be a window there and Mrs. Allen wanted a solid wall because that's the living room so that window above the hose is a big window. I mean, it's a real window, but there's a solid wall on the inside. So they compromise. Uh, other features, very small. Okay, we're going to stop here in the hallway for a second in the entryway and uh, let me tell you some of the other features of the house. Now again, this house was really interesting because it was built in 1869 or finished in 1869. It always had central heat, which was unusual. The radiators, uh, today it's all geothermal heating and cooling, but uh, the radiators were a part of the house. And another thing that was very unusual about the house, it always had indoor plumbing. There was a cistern on the roof that would collect the rainwater, and so that way they could draw uh, water from their baths and flush the toilets, uh, which were all on the uh, second floor. Uh, the kitchen was in the basement and still is uh, in the basement. All of the light fixtures are original. Uh, they were gas, of course, when the house was built. But you can see like with the little knob here, that's where the servant would turn the gas up or down depending on how much light uh, they wanted in the house. 
So all of my pictures are original. All of the woodwork is original. Uh, in fact, it's never even been refinished. The only uh, woodwork that's been refinished is the uh, rosewood on the banister. Hang on to the banister going up or down. But all the rest of it is just as it was when it was built uh, or finished in 1869. One other feature I want to point out, well, a couple of things. Uh, the height of the door here. Okay, this is about 14 feet high. And each one of the sides of this door, you can see how big they were, uh, would weigh several hundred pounds. Well, as you go back toward the back of the house, each one of these arches gets a little shorter and a little shorter and a little shorter. And the architect wanted it that way because when you're in the back of the house, you look up to the front, it looks even bigger and grander uh, than it really is because of the optical illusion. And one other thing I want to point out while we're still here in the hallway is uh, this etching in the glass here. Uh, Mr. Allen had that etching put in as a tribute to his uncle, who was a captain in the army. And he was one of the founders of Fort Des Moines, which later became Des Moines, the city. And so uh, he put the, uh, had the etching put in the glass of Fort Des Moines as a tribute to his uncle. Okay, come on in. Here we go. All right, well, we'll start with this room. And uh, if you were a guest of Mr. or Mrs. Hubble, uh, a servant would greet you at the door and you would give the servant your card and then they would take the card to Mr. or Mrs. Hubble or whoever uh, you wanted to see and bring them down to uh, the reception or waiting room here. It was also an overflow room for parties. Um, you can see in the mirror the architect's vision of why it was so important because when you look in the mirror here, you see almost an endless uh, vision of chandeliers. It looks like they're repeating. And all of, the, uh, all of the lights in the house are very symmetrical like that so that they all line up. Uh, the tiger rug, I have to talk about the tiger rug. Uh, the oldest son was the hunter in the family. And that was what wealthy young men of that time period did. They didn't know anything about endangered species or anything. And so there are several trophies of Fredericks in the house. Uh, this tiger rug is not the original. The family kept the original tiger rug. But this tiger had a, a happier story. His name was Toby. And he was brought back to Iowa by a Chi after World War II. And he lived on a farm up near Marshalltown, Iowa. Uh, there were four boys, they came to school for show and tell and everything. Well, when he died, they turned him into a round side. And there's a solid wall uh, on the inside. Uh, the chandelier uh, was added by Mr. Hubble again. And that's about seven feet tall, uh, weighs over 250 pounds. And there are 2,200 individual Czechoslovakia crystals on it. Now, two years ago, I believe it was, uh, the mansion is closed in January and February for cleaning and renovation and things. They took that chandelier down crystal by crystal, numbered all the crystals, cleaned each crystal, and then reassembled it. Of course, they don't do that every year, but uh, it's certainly sparkly and shiny uh, still after a couple of years. The uh, tapestry on the wall over here was uh, brought back by uh, Grover and his wife, the youngest son who lived in the home and took care of his father. The furniture is of the time period. Uh, it's not original to the house, it's Belter furniture. It was an Ohio manufacturer. And that's rosewood on the back of the chairs. And it's laminated together and then carved. Um, so it's, it's really beautiful, it's not as comfortable as it. And of course, the white marble fireplace that they talked about. Uh, here we have Mr. and Mrs. Hubble. Just got Ann Beulah on our wedding day. Uh, by the way, the uh, people who were in the video uh, playing Beulah and the Count Bachleister, uh, they were descendants of Beulah and uh, the Count, like great-great-great-grandchildren or something of that sort. 
Well, Mr. and Mrs. Hubble, this kind of an interesting story. He was originally courting or dating her older sister, even proposed, wanted to marry her. She turned him down. She didn't think he'd amount to anything. So he went up to Northwest Iowa, studied law, platted land, came back to Des Moines, and started courting the younger sister. Well, they were married for 61 years, and indeed he did amount to something. He was a very good businessman. And so they, you know, had 61 years of marriage, three children, kind of interestingly. And here we have the music room then, and uh, that's a Steinway piano in there now. And uh, this room probably underwent the most renovation. They turned it into kind of a suite for Mr. Hubble in his last years. Uh, they took out the window, put in a door, he liked to go on car rides. Uh, somehow there was an elevator in here that went up to the second floor. There was also kind of a half bath, and so I have a feeling that's why that room was carpeted because uh, they probably had to uh, tear you know, quite a bit up uh, to recreate the music room. And those sliding doors there, the pocket doors, it's amazing. They, they're way several hundred pounds each, and yet they're so well designed. I've seen people open and close them. You know, it's, it's like there's a track above and a track below, and still very, very smooth. All right, and then of course our moose, that's another of Frederick's trophies. It's been hanging there since 1909. Now some guys tell the story that the moose was hung on the wall at the exact, at the exact height it was when it was shot. That would have been an awfully big moose. I'm not sure that I entirely believe that. I've never seen a moose up close, I guess, but that would have been a I don't doubt it. Really? Wow. Okay, well, then we'll go with that story. <laughs> that it was yeah. the height it was when it was shot. And we we'll open this door, and uh, everybody's got a little skeleton in the closet, but that's not what I'm trying to do. And this is all geothermal heating and cooling today, and again, not a reason to show you that. This was original a one-person pulley elevator. Remember, the servants lived up on the top floor. The kitchen was in the basement, still is. So if the servants had to take, like, laundry or whatever downstairs, all right, then we'll move down here to the dining room and notice how much shorter the uh, doors are down here. They're about 10 feet tall. Many homes would have the doors that tall. Uh, the dining room is beautiful. Uh, another one of the pink marble fireplaces. Uh, Mr. Hubble had the uh, uh, China Cap, the buffet added uh, when he moved into Terrace Hill. The uh, door that leads out that way would have gone to a butler's pantry. And again, the kitchen is directly below the dining room. And so to bring the food up, there was a dumb waiter. The food would be brought up, the servant, poor servants would then uh, serve the family and to take the dirty dishes. A little table over in the alcove there would have been just for family, maybe breakfast.